Ah. Wait. He's leaving. Hey! He's coming back. Nope, 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 I'm coming. James, she doesn't want to talk to you. Get off my porch! Imagine someone trying to break into your home and hurt your loved one. What would you do? Well, this dad doesn't have to imagine it. He lived it. When his daughter's ex-boyfriend tried to storm into their home, he chose to protect his daughter by all means necessary, including killing the ex. But how justified were his actions? Was there a way that the situation would have been resolved with less devastating results? Let's explore the case of the dad who murdered his daughter's ex for her. 22-year-old Allison Duckrow lived in Sydney, Ohio with her parents Mitchell and Stacy Duckrow. They were a normal family and lived a quiet, peaceful life without any major incidents. But on the Sunday of July 31st, 2022, all of that would change. The day started like any other for the Duckrow family. Allison, or Allie as she was popularly known, and her mom Stacy decided to go out for breakfast while the dad chose to stay in and watch a Netflix movie. At around 10.30 a.m., the two women returned home and they were captured in the ring doorbell camera walking into the house as a car pulled up in the driveway behind them. A few minutes later, a young man wearing a gray t-shirt, shorts, and a blue hoodie and a baseball cap is seen approaching the door and ringing the doorbell. He would later be identified as Allie's ex-boyfriend, James Rail, also 22. He and Allison went to the same high school and dated on and off for a few years before breaking up for good in 2019. As he rang the doorbell, Allie's mom can be heard telling him to go away because her daughter didn't want to talk to him. Wait, he's leaving. Hey, he's coming back. Nope, 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 I'm calling. James, she doesn't want to talk to you. But James doesn't answer back and tries to push his way into the house. At this point, Allison's dad, Mitchell, is heard telling James to get off his porch and warns him that he is armed. But James is undeterred and is determined to get in. Get off my porch! James, no! What happens next is really chilling to watch. As the terrifying sounds of gunshots ring through the air, James is seen staggering away from the door before collapsing in the driveway of the property with only his feet visible on camera. A neighbor is seen coming to the scene and walks over to where James was lying on the ground. Okay, wait. He's fine, he don't have nothing. He don't have no gun. He don't have no gun. Don't do anything. He was trying to break in and get to our daughter. Okay, well he's not moving, he don't have a gun. He broke our door in. To our, trying to get to our daughter. Our daughter is busting in. Okay, hold on. Did you shoot him? Yes! Several more neighbors arrive, but none of them think to help James. Oh, you didn't call it's hard to know. We're on the phone with him right now. Okay, he's not moving. He's, he, he, he ain't going nowhere. Okay, hold on. I heard five shots. Like, the no, hell? three shots. He broke into our door coming in after our daughter. But my husband shot. By the time law enforcement officers arrive, seven minutes later, James was already gone. An autopsy would later show that James had been shot three times, once in the left shoulder, the right shoulder, and the back. Detectives were informed that glass shards were found in the back wound, which was a close proximity wound, and found to be the shot that caused his death. James's family was completely devastated when they learned of his tragic death. They described him as kind and loving and claimed that he had only gone to the Duck Row residence to check on Allie. My brother had no history of anger or violence. He was very kind and compassionate. I fell to my knees because it couldn't be true. He's not supposed to die before me. James's heartbroken sister even released a voicemail recording that James had sent to Allie the night before he was killed. Hi, Allie. Um, it's James. Um, I just 
uh, wanted to reach out to you um, because I uh, I just wanted to uh, see how you're doing um, and uh, maybe hear from you if that would uh, be all right, I guess. Um, it's, it's been a while since I've talked to you and um, I don't know. I feel like it, uh, I don't know what I feel. From the voicemail, James sounds like a really sweet guy who cared about Allison. So how did a seemingly nice guy become the person we saw in the footage trying to break into someone else's home? What was his intention when he got in? Detectives at the scene had begun investigating the incident. They started by processing the scene to collect evidence and to talk to all the witnesses who said that they heard multiple gunshots from the residents. The Duckrow family members were also questioned, first at the scene and then later at the police station. I'm not gonna go through a lot of questions right now. Like I said, we got detectives that'll be en route and they'll pretty much be handling how this all shakes out. Allie's dad, Mitch, admitted to firing his gun three times at James after he tried to break into his house. He said that he was watching a movie in the basement when he heard his wife and daughter yelling at someone to leave. At first, he didn't know who it was, but his wife told him that it was James. Mitch had never really met James, but he had heard his daughter talking about him. I started getting nervous, you know, because he wasn't answering. There, there was talking over the ring, telling him to leave. They don't, she don't want to talk to you. Was that over like the phone or? I think they were using. Or were they just yelling through the door? No, I was thinking it was through the phone. Okay. Mitch said that he went out through the garage door to assess the situation and see if he could get James to leave. I ended up going around to the garage door, opening it up, and walking around. And he's just standing there with his head down. And I said, James, I don't know exactly what I said. I know I said his name. You know, you need to leave or something like that. But he would just, he wouldn't acknowledge me. Didn't even budge. That made me kind of nervous. At this point, Mitch knew that something was not right with the young man. So he went back in the house, shut the garage door, and grabbed his gun. Just in case the situation got ugly, and it did. And then... After you um, grabbed your gun from your bedside table, what happened? I went back out and they were still trying to get him to leave and he wouldn't leave. And I was, as soon as I, I was standing there, there was debating on whether to call 911. I said, do it. But then I noticed all that talking, trying to, they wouldn't acknowledge. And I, I saw him starting to jiggle the, the handles and stuff, seeing if it was locked. And that's when I went up to the door. This is when James started banging his body against the door, trying to break in. And Mitch knew that he had to act to protect himself and his family. And then he started hitting it with his shoulder pretty hard to where you saw what he did you know, eventually. And once I realized he was getting in and the door was open is when I shot. Did you sh through the door? I through the window part of the door because the door was open and he was coming in. Allison corroborated her dad's statement saying that when she saw the door break, she got scared and hid. Pulling the door, mom's freaking out. And then like, I don't know how we broke the glass through the door. We like broke the glass, the door frame, whatever that's called, the jam or whatever splits off. He's starting to get in and then I freak out and I go run and hide because I didn't know what to do. She told the detectives about her relationship with James, saying that while they were going in high school, he was pretty nice and a decent guy. But at some point, James relocated to California, and when he returned to Ohio, he was just different. Like his close friends or whatever, he just started treating like crap, and nobody wanted to deal with it. And Allie said, while James was never physically abusive towards her, he would sometimes say some hurtful things to her. Was he ever physically no, or no. mentally? Well, maybe mentally a little bit. You're just getting my head a bunch. 
when he got mad, what kind of things? Was he aggressive at all? Was he would just tell me everything that was wrong with me. He would say that nobody was going to love me anymore. Stuff like that. She said that the two of them had broken up multiple times before, but they always managed to remain friends. However, after their last breakup, Allie didn't want anything to do with James and even blocked him on social media. The last time you had talked to him? Um, I th um, it was either last the beginning of last year or the end of the year before because he had, my cousin had been living with us for a little bit. Okay. And him and my cousin were friends so he came to pick him up. And I told Clay, my cousin, I was like, hey, could you tell him that I'm not comfortable with him being over and everything? Mm -hmm. Allie said that James would take acid while they were in the relationship, but she didn't know if he still took the illicit drugs or whether he had a new girlfriend as they had not been in contact for over a year. When Allie got the voicemail from James saying that he wanted to see how she was doing, she told the detectives that she was scared because it didn't sound like him. That's a little weird. Okay. I know how he usually talks and it wasn't like that at all. Allie was actually on the call with a 911 operator when her dad fired at James. She broke through the door and my dad just I don't She could be heard in the background screaming and then thanked her dad for saving her life. I know. Girl, I'm not mad at you. Thank you. Come here. Sorry. I'm okay. Thank you for saving me. Dad, you're the best dad ever. You just saved my life. Allie's mom was also interviewed and she appeared completely devastated by what had happened, telling detectives he tried to get my daughter. Daughter. He was just standing there with his hands like this behind his back like this and just standing there like this and not, not it's even, not, doing not nothing, nothing. So clearly not normal behavior. No. And Allie, like she was terrified. As her husband confronted James at the door, Stacy said that she pushed her daughter down a hallway to protect her from James. She also told the detectives that throughout the entire ordeal, James did not speak or make a sound. Still, despite everything, Stacy felt sorry for James's family, saying, I can't imagine what his parents are going through. I, I don't know if he had bad intentions, okay, but from what you and Mitch and everybody's telling me, okay, that's not normal behavior for somebody that's something to do. It's one thing to show someone's else, right? But it's not normal behavior for them to just stand there and not, not do anything. After the investigation, the Shelby County Prosecutor and Shelby County Sheriff's Office released a joint statement saying, the front door was a solid wooden door with a deadbolt. The deadbolt was found to be in the locked position and the casing to the lock side of the door was broken. Three holes were found in the decorative glass window in the door and three hollow point nine millimeter spent charges were found on the floor. The weapon was located on the mantle of the fireplace. The case was later passed on to a grand jury, which voted 8-1 against indicting Mitch Duckrow for killing James, citing the state of Ohio's state your ground laws. This is the law that allows homeowners to use lethal force when threatened. Needless to say, James's family did not agree with that and accused Shelby County Sheriff's Department of being biased towards Allison because she had previously worked as a dispatcher. They demanded justice for James and called for a full investigation into his death. There wasn't a full investigation done. They were only on the scene for two hours and then rushed it to the grand jury. I think not only should Mr. Ducro be held accountable, but so should the other people involved that did not do a full investigation. Now, this is a really sad case, whichever way you look at it. On the one hand, I do understand the grief that James's family must be feeling for having lost their loved one in such a tragic way. But on the other hand, James's actions did make the Duckrow family feel unsafe in their own home. And the dad acted in a way that any parent would to protect their child. This is a no-win situation for any of the parties that are involved. It is very, very sad. After the incident, the Duckrow family put their house up for sale and relocated to another state, hoping to start over and put the entire thing behind them. What do you guys think about this case? How would you have acted in Mitch Duckrow's position? Let me know in the comment section and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.